So in this video, I want to talk to you about the role of boundaries in fearful avoidant relationships. And if you are fearful avoidant watching this, I want you to check in and see if this sounds like you. Because understanding this dynamic and then having some steps to really correct it will help you feel more seen, more heard, more understood, more loved, and more connected, not just in your romantic relationships, but literally in all relationships, family, friends, even some dynamic of this in, in the office or with colleagues or coworkers, like these major things will apply. Also, if you're enjoying the content here, please subscribe to this channel and stick around to the end where you're going to hear the three major steps that you have to take in order to transform your relationship to boundaries as a fearful avoidant. Let me see if this sounds like you. You overgive and under receive is sort of step one. Okay. And I want you to imagine this kind of like a cycle you overgive and under receive. And the main reason you overgive and under receive is because on some level, subconsciously, you are trying to earn your worth, right? You are trying to earn to be valued or to have your job or to have your relationship. And maybe at a deeper subconscious level, you sometimes don't even feel worthy of taking up space and having people pour into you and having your needs met for no reason right? So number one, you earn your worth. So you overgive and under receive. You continue the cycle until eventually you become resentful and you start feeling like, Hey, my relationships are one-sided. You feel out of balance. You might feel frustrated. And that goes on for so long until eventually you've had enough, you're resentful enough and you explode. And the explosion may exist along a continuum. You may not actually explode and raise your voice and wave your hands and say mean things, but Maybe you do some version of that, or suddenly you push somebody away, or suddenly you say something critical, or suddenly you raise your voice for a moment, right? So you have this kind of like emotional outburst on some level, okay? So following these steps, overgive and under-receive, feel resentful, eventually there's an emotional outburst, and then you feel so guilty about your behavior. And then because of your guilt, you go back to doing what? Overgiving and under-receiving, <laughs> right? So you're trying to correct and so then you overgive and under-receive more. You feel more resentful. You have the outburst. You feel guilty. Go back to overgive and, and under-receiving. And the cycle may repeat itself over and over and over again. Now, this is what I like to think of as the, of the boundary cycle as the boundary cycle of fearful avoidance. And it's essentially this dynamic that will play out and play out and play out in relationships because of a couple core causes. Number one, you feel unworthy at your core. And number two, you don't know how to set boundaries. You sometimes don't feel worthy of just taking up space. And you may not know like how to even communicate a boundary and you may have difficulty receiving in your relationships as well. So there are these sort of like, there's a couple major core concepts there to, to dig into, but we're going to dig into all of them. So we have to break this cycle. Do you know why? Because the more this cycle goes around and around, the more it actually erodes your relationships long-term because the emotional outburst or the criticism or the frustration, and also because you're harboring so much resentment all the time towards partners and eventually it will cause you to want to push somebody away. So we have to fix this. Now, how does this begin? Well, first and foremost, you have to do some reconditioning on the I am unworthy core wound. I'm going to make a separate video about this. But the I am unworthy core wound is a massive common core wound for fearful avoidance. And when you look at this from a conscious parenting perspective, one of the biggest ways to make a child feel worthy of love um, as they are, not conditional worth, not like they earn their worth, they get worth and, and validation and rewards when they get the good grade on the paper or score the goal or whatever it might be is to give a child love for no reason. So if you have a child and that child's coloring in the corner or sitting playing with toys, go up and give that child love for no reason. And if there's a greater proportion of love for no reason compared to love that is based on conditions, then this child learns to feel that they are inherently worthy of love as they are. So we actually have to plug this in. If you are somebody who has the unworthy core wound, you have to learn to give yourself love as you are for no reason. Even when you made the mistake, even when you did everything wrong, even when you made that massive mistake at work or said the wrong thing in front of somebody you cared about their opinion, you know, in these places, we have to show up and give ourselves love anyways. Love can look like self-care. It can look like self-validation, self-encouragement, self-compassion or kindness. Um, but we have to give ourselves love for no reason. So one of the big underlying dynamics is breaking that unworthiness core wound. The next parts are that you actually have to learn to set boundaries and to feel worthy of taking up space. 
And your avoidants really struggle to receive as a general rule because they're scared to receive too much and then to rely on someone and then the person leaves them and then they feel helpless or they feel a lot of guilt around receiving because they're not sure if they feel worthy of having their needs met in the first place, but we tackle that through the unworthiness core wound, but also you often feel afraid to set boundaries. So in terms of being able to set boundaries, I want you to think of a boundary as a joining instead of a separation. I think a lot of people have this misconception where they think, well, when I set a boundary, it's going to separate me from somebody. No, a boundary is you authentically expressing to a loved one what is okay for you and what is not. And that's a joining. You are letting your true self and your true needs be seen, be heard, be understood, be connected to. So this is the work that you really want to be able to do in this relationship dynamic. So we have three or four core steps here. Okay. Three major ones. Number one, when something doesn't feel good for you, Okay. You have to decide what the boundary must be. So let me give you an example. Let's say this is happening for you at work and maybe you have a coworker. They come to you all the time. They ask you for your help, your advice, your opinion. So you pour into them, but then you don't get your work done. So you're over giving, you're not asking for help back. So you're under receiving and then you're falling behind on your work. So you start to boil up in that resentment. And then eventually you say something rude to them and then you feel badly about it. So you go back and the cycle repeats. So you have to decide in that moment moment, okay, that this is happening and it doesn't feel good for you. You're feeling resentful. What would a better boundary be here? Okay. What would a better boundary be? And then you want to dive into step two, reprogramming your fears of setting the boundary. (laughs) A lot of people are like, no, if I set a boundary, people won't like me. I'll be disliked. I'll be a burden. I will be not good enough. I will be seen as a bad person. Like there can be all these core wounds. And I have another video that you can check out on the core wounds of a fearful avoidant. Um, but there are usually all these core wounds and fears around setting the boundary. You have to challenge that. How can I set a boundary and still be likable? How can I set a boundary and still be good enough? Right. So you have to really challenge that narrative that's there in your mind and really work to overcome it. And then number three, you have to practice exposure work on your boundaries. So you have to communicate your boundaries in in small steps over time consistently. So essentially what you're doing is you're teaching your subconscious mind to stretch out its comfort zone. And then it gets more and more comfortable with this stuff to be to to like over time, essentially. And then there's a fourth step here I want to take you through, but also I just want to let you know if you're like, I really need boundaries. This cycle sounds like me. This is ruining my relationships. Um, And if that's really ringing true for you, you know, boundaries are such an important part of becoming securely attached. In fact, according to integrated attachment theory, which is the body of work that we have published and copyrighted on attachment styles and relationship dynamics, um, one of the six major ingredients to becoming securely attached is learning healthy boundaries. And for fearful avoidance, this is a huge one, even more so than APs and even DAs um, in many cases. So what you want to be able to do here is plug into this, understand what boundaries are. And and if you want to check out a whole course to just fast track the process, um, you can check out the boundaries course below for free for seven days. I'm leaving the link down below for you. Um, And if you cancel before the seventh day, you will never be charged a thing. You can go in. It's all free content for you to explore, whether it's the boundaries course, the reprogramming fearful avoidant attachment style course, all of it's in there at your fingertips. Um, And it's all designed to target the subconscious mind. So you get results really, really quickly. Um, And the last thing I'll say here is when you do communicate a boundary, communicate it in the positive. In other words, communicate it in like the proactive format. There's a big difference between saying, um, Hey, you always, okay. So we'll go back to the coworker example, right? They, they ask for all your help and advice, and then you fall behind because you're pouring into them and you don't get your needs met from them. There's a huge difference between going to your coworker and saying, Hey, you always come to me with all of this stuff. And you never ask me about what I need. And you never try to help me at any point in time. And I'm sick of it. And saying something like, hey, I love chatting with you. I love supporting you. And I'm also noticing that sometimes I need support in the relationship as well. And for me at work, that looks like X, Y, Z. And X, Y, Z can be, that looks like, you know, me being mindful of that. I also have work to do. So I might just have to shorten our chats together. Like when you communicate like that, you're being for a solution instead of against a problem. And there's a massive difference in communication that way. So the more you can make sure that you are for the solution and not against the problem, the more effective, the more effective your boundary setting dynamics are going to be. So I hope this makes sense. This is really important. If you see yourself in this boundary cycle to correct it, healing this is one of the major ingredients that's 
you know, you have to have in order to become securely attached. And it's fairly simple to go through once you just get those steps in place, pattern them in and make it a daily practice for 21 days or more. So after conducting many polls and surveys at the personal development school over the past few years, we have found that students come in and 92% of them become dominantly securely attached within 90 days if they focus on six crucial areas. These six crucial areas have to do with what it takes to become secure according to Gibson Integrated Attachment Theory. And this is to tackle core wounds, learn your needs, learn to emotionally regulate, develop boundaries, communicate better, and update old behavioral coping mechanisms. Now we have these roadmaps and course tracks laid out for you on the other side of when you join. So everything is simple and in front of you to help you take exactly the steps that you need to, to master your love life, create thriving relationships, and really see the results in your healing journey so you can let go of old wounds, old baggage, and truly leave it behind. And on top of that, included in this 30% off promotion for life, you also gain access to our daily live events, webinars. I'll be there three days a week to answer any questions that you have in your journey. And we have amazing certified integrated attachment theory experts who are there to support you with their daily live events and webinars Monday through Saturday. And this is a great opportunity to connect with like-minded people to get your questions answered and receive any extra bonus support that you need. And last but not least, we even have social events on a daily basis. So you can practice uh, through a sharing circle, being a little bit more vulnerable, connecting with other like-minded people. You can practice through communication scripts, having tough conversations and really modeling that out. And there are so many other supportive events that are there for you on your journey. So I would love for you to join and take this opportunity. I would love for you to be a part of this challenge to become securely attached within that 90 day period. And I can't wait to see you on the other side. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you are enjoying this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And again, that link to the course to check out for free is down below. And I can't wait to see you in future videos.